Welcome back. Uh, straight to our first major conversation right here on uh, the breakfast. Uh, president, uh, a presidential candidate of the ruling All Progressives Congress, uh, the APC, Ashiro Jibola Ahmed Tinubu, may have begun consultations with critical stakeholders of the party to receive inputs on the choice of his running mate, according to reports. Now, the All Progressives Congress standard bearer uh, yesterday met with northern uh, governors of the party um, behind closed doors. Now, while the APC is certain to go north for its pick, uh, the part of the north which it chooses to pull the lucky one from, that's to be Tinubu's running mate, is equally germane to several other considerations as much as religion, which is a chief factor in Nigeria's north. Now, ironically, Tinubu, a Muslim southerner, is surrounded by majorly, majorly by more Muslims uh, who are from the north than the Christian brothers from that part of the country, mostly Muslims. Now, in other words, or in other words, rather, uh, the APC ticket appears to lean more, some suspect, to a Muslim-Muslim pairing uh, than a Christian or a Muslim-Christian blend. Now, this is a very unique situation that the uh, ruling party finds itself in. What will it do going forward and what will be uh, the resultant effect on the outcome of the elections? Joining us to discuss this and the possible names for the job is public affairs analyst Nick Agule. Nick Agule, good morning to you. Thank you very much for your time. Good morning. Thank you for welcoming me. Good morning. Thank you for welcoming me. All right. And good morning to our viewers. Right, uh, uh, um, Nick, Nick. There was uh, a flurry of, of of you know reactions during the All Progressives Congress special convention, where one 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 aspirant, um, Nicholas Felix, said that um, Nigeria does not need a Muslim Muslim ticket, and he's stepping down for uh, Vice President Yemi Oshibaju. Now that was the first time we had about that idea. Along the line, um, Tinubu's campaign put out a statement saying some text messages that were flying out purportedly from him or his campaign saying there would be a Muslim Muslim ticket are not true. Now, I've listened to our introduction. Um, it seems that the party has more chances or the probability of producing a Muslim running mate for uh, a Tinubu from the north are higher than uh, producing a Christian running mate from the north for Tinubu. What's your analysis of this? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Nick Algule, we can hear you. Please go on. Um, I don't know if it's a microphone setting, uh, but you didn't come across in your second half of your question. I heard the first half, which is one of the presidential candidates pitching his tent with the vice president, Professor Yemi Osibadjo. Okay, okay. But I didn't hear the second part of the question. All right. So, so I'm I'm saying that um, the the party uh, from the introduction that that we we uh, we had, uh, what I was saying was that the party seems to be leaning. A lot of uh, political observers are saying towards a Muslim Muslim pairing rather than a Muslim Christian pairing, uh, simply because you have more uh, 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 you know more possibilities or more names that are coming up from the north who are Muslims than those who are Christians from the northern part of Nigeria. So what's your analysis of this, of the possibility? Is a, do you think the party is leaning more uh, towards a possible Muslim-Muslim pairing or a Muslim-Christian pairing? And is this really important in the scheme of things? Hope you heard that. Yes, I heard that. Yeah, th thank you very much for the question. I think the APC has got a lot of work to do. Because, like you rightly said, either way, whether they go with a Muslim Muslim ticket or a Muslim Christian ticket, they are going to be confronted with a lot of political challenges that they will need to deal with. If we look at a Muslim Muslim ticket, the APC will be trying to match the fact that the PDP have fielded a northern Muslim as their presidential candidate. Because the fact of the matter is that there are many people in the north who wouldn't take a southern Muslim, as in like a southwest Muslim, in Bola Ahmed Tinubu, 
to be a, a Muslim that they are going to cast their votes for. So the APC now needs a called Northern Muslim to back up that ticket so that they can woo the called Northern voters to also back their ticket. On the other hand, there are many Nigerians that we have issues backing a Muslim Muslim ticket. Perhaps this wouldn't have been an issue a couple of years ago, but this past several years of Nigeria have brought these religious differences to the fore of national discourse. And when you look at events that are happening, especially given that people who are alleged, not even alleged, now the federal government has come out to say the Owo massacre was actually caused and perpetrated by the Islamic State of West African province, ISWAP. So Nigerians will be very cautious to back a Muslim Muslim ticket, given all that has been happening in our country in the recent years. So the APC would then like to balance that up. Since they cannot go a South-South ticket, they would like to now go a South-North ticket, but the Northerner should be a Christian so that they can balance those sentiments. Again, if the APC says they want to go with a ticket of Bola Ahmed Tinubu and a Northern Muslim, again, the issues I have earlier said are going to come into play. So bottom line here is that it's going to be a difficult decision for the APC to make. But they are going to look at the candidate because I think the, the determining factor here is going to be that candidate that will be the vice presidential candidate. I think in the minds of Nigerians, if the APC goes with someone like Baba Ghana Zulum, even though he's a Muslim and it will make a Muslim Muslim ticket, I believe that Nigerians, a lot of Nigerians, will be happy to back such a ticket. But if they go with any of the core Northern Muslims, whose pedigree will sound like people who could be fanatical or who could be, you know, uh, uh, let me say, holding fast onto uh, their religion as in backing things like the mother of a person who blasphemes the name of the prophet, Nigerians will we, we, we be very concerned with such, with such a ticket. And, and I think it will be a, a difficult one for, for the APC. All right. All right. Inter interesting analysis. Uh, uh, but, but just before Messi comes in, you're saying that, um, just to understand you, uh, that uh, the, the core Northern uh, uh, vote or voters do not consider uh, uh, Muslims who are from southern Nigeria, for instance, terrible as uh, 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 maybe maybe first class or pure as pure Muslims. Is that what you're saying? Because I mean, uh, why wouldn't they they accept that as a Muslim on the ticket? Tinubu is a Muslim. Absolutely, that, mm. that, uh, 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 absolutely that. Absolutely, that. That is the reality of the fact. The reality of the fact see the Southwest Muslims as being moderate. And there are, I mean, I'm not a Muslim, but I have heard that there are some of the core Northern fanatical Muslims that will not even attend the same mosque with Southwest Muslims. Or we attend the mosque where the Imam is a Southwest Muslim. So those. Those issues that are there, they are, they are being uh, canvassed, is the reality we live with. 
And I believe that uh, the, 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 the problem that the APC had was the fact that the PDP selected a core Northern Muslim. Because now, you know, there's a possibility that even some of the APC governors in the North, especially those who were not backing uh, power shift to the South, may even work against the interest of the APC or even back the, um, the, the, the presidential candidature of uh, Atiku Abubakar, who is a core Northern Muslim. So, so those realities are there. And this is the, the, these are all the parameters and the dynamics that the APC will have to consider in picking a running mate to their presidential candidate, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. All right, uh, let's take a look at the scenario. I mean, of course, the 1993 elections, uh, you had um, Abiola at the time having a running mate, uh, Babagana Kingigwe, Muslim, Muslim ticket. A lot of persons have said that that cannot be, it could not be replicated at the time, a uh, certain time prior to this time where he felt like we're going to have a consideration in 2015. That didn't happen. Uh, and a lot of persons are still saying that that can never be an issue. So are you saying that there's a possibility that we would have, um, you know, a replica, that combination and acceptance of 1993 where you had a Muslim, Muslim ticket, uh, was citing the example of Abiola and King Iwe. 1993, Nigeria backed a Muslim Muslim ticket. But the times have since changed from 1993, which is almost 30 years ago, to now. Especially, especially, like I said, in the last seven years of this current government. I mean, uh, if we looked at the elections in 2015, Nigerians could have easily backed a Muslim Muslim ticket if they saw that the two Muslims on the ticket were capable of delivering good governance to them. But that has changed because from 2015, we have had Muslim fanatics parading either as Boko Haram terrorists or bandits or kidnappers coming into Nigerian territory causing mayhem, kidnapping, maiming, killing Nigerian citizens, and the body language at the center, which is being heard by a Muslim called Northern Muslim, suggests that uh, they are not uh, interested in going after these people. Look at what happened in Owo recently, the Owo massacre. I served in Ondo State, so I'm very well knowledgeable about the geography of that area. Owo is in the middle of South Nigeria, in the middle of South Nigeria. And you have bandits come into that place, shoot, kill, maim, and it is alleged by the victims, the, the survivors, that even explosives were detonated and they walk away casually walk away nobody chases after them yet we have a chief of defense staff of the armed forces of nigeria who as i speak is sitting in his office we have the service chiefs we have the inspector general of police we have all these security agencies that are just watching these people cause mayhem in nigeria and they are not going after them you see security incidents can happen anywhere in the world recently there was a, a, a madman, uh, I will call him a madman because he, he has to be mentally deranged. In, a, in America, who went into a primary school and was shooting uh, school children? That happened there, but the difference between that case and the Nigerian case is that there was a security response. Even now, the head of security in that state are being questioned because they, they feel the response was not swift enough. But in Nigeria, there is no response at all. As I speak now, the over 60 uh, hostages that were taken on the train from Abuja to Kaduna are still in a forest. That forest is on the territory of Nigeria. It's not as if it's in a foreign land. 
And yet we have a security architecture that is commanded by a core northern Muslim that is not going after these people. How can Nigerian citizens be held hostage in a forest with the rain falling on them, how they are feeding, how they are living, is not a border to the security agencies. That they haven't gone to that place, condoned off that forest, combed that forest, and either kill the bandits or arrest them so that Nigerian citizens gain their freedom. Those people are in that forest now for several months on Nigerian soil. So the commander-in-chief of Nigerian armed forces, who is a colonel the Muslim, has a burden of guilt to say that why is it that the Nigerian armed forces that were so celebrated all over the world as the one that was clinical in the execution of oppressions can no longer move to confront these bandits and terrorists that have taken over Nigeria? This is what is happening in the country today, and Nigerians are thinking about it. Nigerians are saying, is the commander-in-chief not doing enough because these guys are Muslims? They are fighting a jihad? Or why is he not doing enough? And that is going to affect the Nigerian voting pattern, especially Nigerians of North Central down to the South, if the APC comes up with a Muslim, Muslim ticket, especially if the choice of that vice presidential candidate is someone like A. Rufai. A. Rufai, ordinarily, an urban, educated, uh, young uh, Muslim uh, governor, you can see what is happening in Kaduna State. You can see what's happening in Kaduna State from him saying, I am going to be settling the bandits and the terrorists so that they don't kill my people, to him taking no action at all against what they are doing, and to him making all sorts of commentaries that has now made Kaduna to become the fertile ground for insurgency, for banditry, for kidnapping. Nigerians are going to be very edgy with that kind of ticket. Um, so, so time to, to go down, and you've already started. Um, uh, so that's great um, to look at the individual uh, um, names that are being uh, mentioned out there. You've started with Erufai. Um though I mean he cannot be 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 blamed for directly uh, uh, instigating or influencing banditry. I mean maybe his strategies may not have been uh, perfect or right, uh, but he's been calling on the federal government to. To help, you know, you know, trying to put out statistics and doing what he can. Maybe the methods have not been right, but but moving on from that, um, he is the first northern governor. Was the first northern governor to speak out in support of a uh, uh, power shift in the APC to the southern uh, part of the country, and he sustained his support for a uh, power shift in the APC to the southern part of Nigeria till the very very end. Doesn't this put him in, in good stead for such a, a, a position as running mate to Bola Metinubu? Well, there are two, two arguments. The first side is that the governor of Kaduna State, Madam Nasi Erufai, could have been playing a political game. He saw that, okay, if I come supporting power should become the vice presidential candidate of the party if a presidential candidate is chosen from the south so that could be one side of it it could just be his own political ambition that actually pushed him into taking such a stand very early on during the campaigns all right are you there uh, nick All right, uh, uh, interesting uh, analysis. There another name. On the in office. Okay, Nick, Nick Agule, if you can hear me, another name that has been uh, um, uh, heard or mentioned, oh gosh, to put it that way better, is um, Abdullah Ganduji, um, who towards the uh, latter part of Bola Metinubu's rounds, you know, around the country, uh, visiting different states to confer 
and consult and uh, uh, meet with the delegates of the Europe Progressives Congress uh, was seen. Gandhiji was quite visible uh, on some of the visits of um, Tinubu to Calabar to other parts of the country. Um, he is governor of a northwest state, Kano State, which um, is one of the biggest states in the country, along with Lagos State. Um, uh, lots of votes could come in from Kano for the All Progressives Congress. Kano is influential, is the center of northern Nigeria. Um, and uh, this is, puts him in advantage. What, what's your analysis of um, Ganduji, who is a, a Muslim, and um, his, his chances uh, of, of, of you know, clinching that VP slot? So if the APC goes with Governor Ganduje, uh, first and foremost, it will be good for the APC in terms of matching whatever advantage the PDP would have got by selecting Atiku Abubakar, also a Northern Muslim, as their presidential candidate. Again, Kano, like you said, is a big state. Uh, it's one of the states that determine elections in Nigeria, Kano and Borono, I think, that determine elections in Nigeria because of the huge voter numbers they have. You can also see that uh, Governor Ganduje is in control of the delegates from Kano because Kano voted massively for uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. However, <clears throat> the question will be asked by Nigerians will be, what has Governor Ganduje done in Kano State in the past seven years that will make him to be a worthy vice president? What has he done? What are the transformational uh, steps or projects that uh, Kano uh, have, in, uh, have enjoyed or benefited under his government? How has he managed the resources that have been entrusted to him either from the Federation account or his own internally generated revenue? Nigerians will be thinking about in the early days of his uh, government, uh, in what became uh, popularly called the Gandola, the Gandola Gate. People will be thinking about all those things. So I think um, the ticket of uh, Bola Hamid Tinubu and Ganduje, Ganduje will be a minus to that ticket more than the advantages he's going to bring to it. Uh, we, have, we have other names, I'm um, sure. Uh, the likes of Simon Lalong, the likes of uh, Boss mm -hmm. Mustafa, who is the secretary of the government of the Federation, have, have also been mentioned. Uh, Kasim Ibrahim Imam, who is a former PDP governorship candidate uh, in 2003 and 2007 in Borno State, has already been um, uh, mentioned as well. Uh, Abubakar Badaru, who Tinbu um, eulogized on that stage at the Eagle uh, Square in Abuja when he was uh, called on to give his um, acceptance speech. He had uh, encomiums for uh, uh, Governor uh, um, of Jigawa State, Badaru, who is another force among the governors within the APC with a promising political uh, career. And you mentioned Baba Gana Zulum, who you defined or uh, you described as a sort of a moderate. Uh, um, uh, seem to be a moderate Muslim with quite um, uh, some achievements in Bonu State, especially in the area of uh, education. Um, so so this, these are the names. Um, uh, and you seem to be saying that uh, a moderate Muslim will be more acceptable to the southern part of Nigeria. But in ending, do you feel that southern Nigeria will accept a Muslim, Muslim ticket? Will they win the vote of the southwest, south-south? In southeast. Thank you very much for that question. So, in a nutshell, a Muslim Muslim ticket is going to be a very hard sell in Nigeria of today, especially with the events in the last seven years. Except that Muslim vice presidential candidate is someone that will come to be accepted by Nigerians, of which Baba Gana Zulum stands out as that Muslim, Northern Muslim vice presidential candidate. The rest of the other people names that have been mentioned are going to be uh, very difficult to sell. My advice to the APC is that they shouldn't go for a Muslim Muslim ticket. They should go for a Muslim South and Northern Christian ticket. And 
Bola Ahame Tinibu and the APC don't have to look only within the political circles for that northern Christian that will be acceptable both to the north and to the south. They can go outside of the political circles and they can even look at technocrats. They can look at people who have not uh, been in the political equation as in when they are selected, other people Nikagule, will not we want to back them, now. even within those political circles. That's another way they can look at it. But a Muslim Muslim ticket is going to be a very, very hard sell, except maybe for someone like uh, Governor Zulu. What the APC well, well, well Nikagule, we, we have to let you go now. Yeah. I mean, very interesting okay. in all of this is the fact that you have mentioned that in 1993, I mean, Nigerians were going to accept, uh, you know, Muslim Muslim ticket and what has happened afterwards, 1993, up until this moment, uh, it calls for a lot of thinking and concern. Does it necessarily mean that Nigerians are very religious and, you know, very um, ethnic in, in terms of elections? What, what, what really was different in 1993 is what a lot of persons would constantly question. But that's the much we can take at this point in time. We appreciate your time and we look forward to sharing more of your thoughts on The Breakfast. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks for having me today, and good morning to our viewers. Well, that's it. Uh, that's the much we can take on off the press, I beg your pardon, on our first major conversation this morning. We'll take a break. When we return, we'll be looking at Nigeria and Sierra Leone and the fact that, you know, we had a, uh, you know, victory, recorded a victory, uh, Super Eagles, and with a new coach. Please stay with us.